miles alone My faith seems to come and go Good morning, everyone. How is everybody? Surviving the heat? Barely? Barely, I know, right? All right, if you look on the back of your bulletin, we have a brand new QR code. It's blue, you can't miss it. Just hover your phone, follow the directions. I actually did it myself and it wasn't that hard. But we'll see if I did it right. I'll have to ask Ramona. If you don't like doing it that way, we still have the connect cards under the back of the pew. You can always fill that out. You know. Um, put it in the offering plate or drop it off in one of the boxes in the back. Whatever you're comfortable doing is fine. So tonight, you're going to come back here at 5 o'clock for dinner. Beef tips and all the good sides. I know, right? And Nick's over here going, mmm. You know, beef tips and rice and gravy. Who doesn't like that? And then at 6 o'clock, we're going to have worship in here. It's also, our silent auction is still going on. Get all your stuff looked at. If you have something favorite that you want, keep an eye on it. At the end of dinner, we'll close that out. And then after worship, we'll let you know if you got what you wanted. So come tonight for our wonderful worship. No pickleball, though, because we're going to be in here worshiping. No pickleball. But you need to see there's a brand new surprise over in the CLC. We have an indoor court now available that just got finished yesterday. So if you don't like the heat, like me, and probably a bunch of other people, you know, we have an indoor option that'll be coming soon. Vicki 
and uh, Miss Denise have been working very hard on getting this together. If you have any questions, you can always contact them. So no pickleball tonight. On Tuesday, our wonderful women of Wesley are going to be meeting here at 930. They're going to go shopping at Mardell. That's the Christian bookstore that's in Beaumont. All women are welcome. And then they're going to go have lunch at Mellow Mushroom. So all you women meet here at 930. I think y'all are going to caravan and go over there and have a wonderful good time. Next Wednesday. All right, kids, y'all ready? Next Wednesday, Wacky Wednesday starts. All you parents, I know you're ready. We are having our adult Bible study that Drew's going to be leading on Acts. We'll have our grief support meeting. All the kids have all their stuff. 5.30 is dinner. 6 o'clock is all the Bible studies. Miss Lisa's been in the back and handing out some little white pieces of paper. We have a couple of new guidelines that we want to share with everyone. Drew can go over that later. Familiarize yourself with this. We need lots of help with lots of people. So um, we have that for y'all. So next Wednesday, guys, I know I'm super excited for all that. Back to Church Sunday is September the 15th. That will be here before we know it because school is already in. Invite your friends, invite your neighbors, get back here, back to church on Sunday, one service. Remember, one service. You show up at nine o'clock, we're gonna have Sunday school first. Then 10 o'clock, we're gonna have our service. Then we have lunch. We don't know what we're having yet, I'll let you know. So one service on the 15th. If you didn't get your picture taken for our directory on the 29th, we're going to have makeup for that yet. We still don't have a time for that, but call Ramona, let her know that you're interested and she can get that set up as soon as we have information. Oh, I forgot to tell you, for Wacky Wednesday, we need these. Not just these, any type of little Debbies. Label them, put them in the kitchen, bring them to the office because everyone likes cosmic brownies, especially me. Okay, Fall Fest not trunk or treat. We are going to have trunks to treat, but it's going to be a fall fest. We're starting to gear up for that. So we are going to be having face painting, a craft fair, live music, games, raffle, all kinds of fun stuff in addition to our trunk or treat. So we're going to call it a fall fest this year because we want to do more than just trunk and treats. We want to have lots and lots, lots of entertainment. We are going to start collecting candy because it's never too soon. Last year we ran out of candy and had to go buy more. We had thousands and thousands of people come through here. So as you're shopping at Walmart and Target, and you go by and you see the candy, get the stuff you don't like, because if you get the stuff you like, you're gonna eat it, because that's what I do. And then we will have a place for you to drop it off here. So keep in mind that we are starting to need candy. No more Tammy needs candy. Chelsea needs candy. And you know Chelsea, she likes candy. <laughs> All right, and so does Cannon. All right, is there anything else? Are we good? All right, let's stand in worship. Christ is my firm foundation
you're preparing a place where the sorrows erased and when i stand before you i'll find all along it was me on your side who am i that the king of the world will give one single thought about my broken heart who am i that the god of all grace wipes the tears from my face and says come as you are you paid the price you took What a powerful song that was. And uh, I love those words, come as you are. And so we're going to go to the throne room today. Our prayers go where we can't, right up to the throne room of God. And uh, we're going to come as we are in the throne room of God. So let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this place where we come as we are. Some of us uh, have come in here expecting to encounter you. And others have maybe come out of obligation, but make this be a changing day for all of us where we center ourselves for the rest of this service. And, and we, we are guided by the Holy Spirit to, to, to deepen our love with you to get out of this service what you want us to get out of this service from the prayer time to the songs to the to the sermon lord because ultimately we're here to worship you as your word says that that we are supposed to come together and worship you as the brothers and sisters in Christ and we thank you for the freedom to do just that and as we come as we are today, Lord, we, we come with a variety of motion, uh, emotions. There's a variety of emotions and feelings and, and moods and temperaments that are in this room today, Lord. And we just give it all to you, whether it's grief, whether it's depression, whether it's sadness, whether it's anger, whether it's joy and jubilation. We give it to you and we say thank you. And so, Lord, we, um, we've come to this place to meet you today. And so we ask again to center ourselves so that we do meet you in a profound way. You promised to be present where two or more are gathered, Lord, but we have 200 or more gathered today. And we thank you for being here. We thank you, Lord, for being with us. And this is your house, Lord. And we thank you for being present. As we sit here, Lord, we remember those who are um, dealing with physical ailments, maybe even in the hospital. We have names flooding across our, our minds right now. And we lift up all those names flooding across our minds and all those names on the prayer list. And even those who maybe we don't know, but are in dire need of somebody to lift them up to your throne room that may not have anybody praying for them. And so, Lord, we lift them, them up to you as well. And we thank you so much for, for this day. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who enables us, empowers us, to live out this life called Christianity. We thank you for your son who lived a righteous life and then gave it to us. And while he was here on earth, he, 
he taught us to pray what we now call the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses and those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Receive this offering as, of music as we are mindful of our giving back to God.
if I could have all the children and tweens join me up front, please. Good morning, everyone. Did y'all have a great first couple of days back to school? Yes. Yeah, were you happy to be back? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Very happy. Oh. All right, sometimes we all face a problem. We know what is right, but we still find it hard to do. Imagine like sharing your toys. If you have friends over and they want the toy you're playing with, but you're, you don't wanna share that, do you? Sometimes? Or maybe your mom got you some really fancy coloring pencils at school and one of your classmates wants to borrow it. It's nice and it's kind to share, right? But sometimes we don't wanna do it. This is part of the human condition, something it means to be human. We know what is right, but we struggle inside. In the Bible, Paul talks about this. He says that even though he knows what is right, sometimes he doesn't want to do it. Do you ever feel that way? Do any of you? Yeah? Yeah? It's like a tug of war inside of us between doing the good things and then doing the opposite. But here is the best part, is that God knows about our struggles, right? Yeah? We're all being quiet this morning. When we feel like we can't make the right choice on our own, we can ask God for his strength and his guidance. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for granting us strength when we struggle. Thank you for guiding us to make the right choices and for loving us always through them. Amen. Good morning, church. Man, it's good to see all of you here. My favorite day of the week when we get to come together and uh, worship and hear the word proclaimed. Um, I'm really excited about, I'm, I'm always excited to preach, but especially today, this is one of my favorite passages, and it's about the human condition, as Chelsea brought that up. And I'm going to read uh, Romans 7, 14 through 25. Um, and this is entitled the inner conflict and we're gonna we're gonna parse this out we're gonna we're gonna uh t there's gonna be a couple takeaways um i'm sorry i didn't, I didn't have that in your bulletin today because they're usually if i have a couple of takeaways i like it to be in the bulletin but i um i just didn't do that today so you'll have to take copious notes without the help of those um those takeaways in your bulletin. So this is 14 through 25 in the seventh chapter of Romans. And this is Paul talking. He says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh sold into slavery under sin. I don't understand my own actions for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do not want now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. That's an interesting statement. We're going to look at that. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. There he goes again, saying the same thing. Now, if I do... What I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. There he says that again, which we'll talk about. So I find to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, 
making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? And that, of course, goes on to 25. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we, um, we thank you for this time. This is your time. This is, um, Lord, uh, I just give you this time to guide me. Holy Spirit, anoint my words. Holy Spirit, come, help me. Lord, if this is going to benefit anybody, Lord, you have to be in it. And you are invited fully to take over. We thank you for blessing this time in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, you, if you've been here for any length of time, you've heard me say these words. There is only one way to salvation. There's only one way to heaven. There's only one way to the Father. And that is true, except there's a caveat. And the caveat is, there is technically another way. And that is to be perfect all the time. Never sin, be perfectly righteous, and uphold the law from age zero to however you are, however old you are today, or however young you are today, is what I should say. Of course, that's impossible. It's impossible. But God wants us to be righteous. So righteousness is, is in, in biblical terms, is having no sin in your life at all. Every attribute, every attitude, every thought, no sin. Raise your hand if you've made it to, to your current age with um, no sin and um, perfect righteousness. I don't see any hands, although Meredith's hands just went up. I don't... Oh, okay, okay. I mean, Meredith's a great, uh, a great person, but I'm guessing she sinned once in her life. Just once back in, what, the 80s? Okay. I'm sure she loves being part of this sermon. I did, I saw the hand, I saw, I, I don't know, okay. Um, I'll hear about that later. Anyways... It's an impossible task for any human, only Jesus. And you see, this is what the rest of the world is trying to do uh, if, if they're religious or religionists. I, I'm not into religion. I, I'm into a relationship. I mean, um, the Eastern religions, they, they try to do good for karma, right? To try to create good karma. Karma is nowhere in Scripture. There, there is nothing about karma. Um, and what the Eastern religions do, I'm thinking about Buddhism and Hinduism, and what they want to do is, is, is get good karma so they, so they are reincarnated into something better. So eventually they can get out of the samsara, which is the circle of life and death, and reach full enlightenment or, and, or nirvana or whatever it is. And then you have Islam, which is you, you try to do certain things uh, to earn God's approval. And, and we know from the, Old, from the Old Testament all the way through the New Testament, all this is impossible. We have to have a Savior, and luckily we do in Jesus Christ. And that's why Paul exclaims, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, in this passage... We get a raw portrayal of the human condition. And it's not pretty. It's not pretty. Paul exclaims, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh sold under sin. When he's talking about the law, he's talking about all of God's rules, the commandments and all of God's uh, expectations. And he says it's spiritual. Well, he's saying it's spiritual because it originates from God, so it's holy and reflects his character. He says, we know the law is spiritual, but I'm of the flesh sold under sin, so how do I uphold the law? 
He says, for I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. We have that tendency, don't we? we? I mean, the tendency for Paul, and I'm guessing most of us we can late, relate to so often, to do the opposite of not only what we're supposed to do, but want to do. You know, here, and, and here is a very, um, th th this is not a great example of this, but it, it kind of gets at it. You know, um, I have a cold glass of Diet Coke here. And I've got smart water right here. And we know the smart water is better for me. And it's going to do better things. This has aspartame in it, which is a, supposed to melt your brain. And, um, and it's not going to feel good after the first couple seconds of the taste. And you get that. You know, Diet Coke is weird because I'm, I'm, I'm slightly addicted. I'm, I'm beating my addiction. I'm beating it. I'm phasing it out. But what it does, it, it, give, it does something to your brain. It gives you a jolt. It gives you some type of um, dopamine rush or something. I mean, I don't know what they put in it. But um, other than cancer-causing stuff. Um, <laughs> but... But, you know, it's like, okay, I'm thirsty. I should choose smart water. I choose Diet Coke. Now, on a more serious level, we, we, we have, okay, we can be doing this over here, which is great. God wants us to do it. Or over here, which is destructive. And so often we, we choose that destruction. And Paul continues. He says, now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. Paul is agreeing with God's standards. His, he's got a new nature, and his new nature defends God's standards. Right? When we, come, when we come to Christ, we are a new creation. He does something ex nihilio, meaning out of nothing. He does something in us, out of nothing. We'll talk more about that in a second. And so what Paul is saying here is the law reveals sin, but if we fool ourselves to thinking we can follow the law perfectly, then the law is deadly and leads to death because remember, only Jesus can make us righteous. So if we try to follow the law, really it's just a scoreboard for us, right? Because it's like, oh, I've done that eight times. I haven't done that. I haven't done what God wants me to do over here. You know, and, and so it's just a scoreboard. It can't save you. It leads to death. We need something else. And that's why we have Jesus Christ. But he says this in 17, So it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells with me. Now what Paul is saying here is there's been a complete and permanent change because he's a new creature, new, new, new creation, and the sin doesn't flow out of that new creation. It, and this is important, it flows out of the unredeemed part of ourselves, which is the flesh. And we still have the flesh, friends. Even though we're new creations, even though we believe in Jesus, we still have the flesh. And the flesh serves as a well, as a reservoir, from which all sin operates in our lives. All of it. And that's why Paul says, for I know nothing good dwells in me, that is in my flesh. See, God redeemed our spirits, our souls, but our flesh remains unredeemed. He says, for I have the desire to do what is right but not the ability to carry it out. You see, Paul failed to do only good. If we fail to do only good, then we don't fulfill the requirements of God's holy law. Paul couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. And then again, Paul says, For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Again, Paul is lamenting that he can't be good all the time. And 20, now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells within me. Now, we have to be careful here. 
Paul is not shirking responsibility. He's not saying, it's not my fault, it's my flesh. So every time I sin, it's not me, it's my flesh. No, what he's saying is, is that it's the flesh. And here's the key. Before coming to faith in Christ, you and I and Paul were completely enslaved to the flesh. Translation, we could not please God. There's no way to please God in the flesh. But thanks be to God in Jesus Christ, what he did is he freed us from the enslavement of the flesh, although here's the bad news, we still have it. And that's where sin operates. And so we have a choice. We can either walk in the Spirit or walk in the flesh. And if you're like me, there are times when we do what I call flesh out or walk in the flesh. I mean, it, it happens. Let me give you a personal example. I am very tempted to walk in the flesh when I am at HEB and the person in front of me has so many issues with their checkout. It's like it takes me three minutes, maybe two minutes. And this person has got to call Congress and they've got to call this, and then they got to go get a price check, and then the, the, the person's like, I'm, so, I'm sorry for this, you know. And, and I'm staying because I know if I go to another aisle, there's going to be 52 people there with 8 million items. I also struggle with when Somebody parks their cart right where I need to go. There's my smart water, and there's a cart there. There's a small part of me, not a big part of me, but there's a small part of me that wants to go, get on. <laughs> not a big part of me. I don't do that. I'm patient. I, I try to walk in the Spirit. I walk in the Spirit. But H-E-B, and don't get me started on Walmart. I don't go to Walmart because I know the flesh is going to take over in Walmart. <laughs> At least H-E-B has a lot of items that I need and appreciate. And the service is usually good, and they have a lot of, you know, uh, more than one person checking people out, like Walmart for some reason. Okay, this ends the grocery store portion of the sermon. But you see, we're walking in the spirit or walking in the flesh. And so there are times we're going to flesh out. But we want those to be less and less. That's called sanctification going on to holiness. One thing I don't want us to do with this passage is to throw our hands up and say, I'm never going to be, oh, I'm never going to be perfect. Which is true to a degree. But we are to strive for that. We are to strive for sanctification. Because those in Christ are no longer enslaved to sin. And you know what? God counts you and me as righteous. Because anyone who has put on Christ and, and is covered with that blood, meaning you've said yes to Jesus Christ with your heart and your mind, and you mean it. You've accepted Him as your Lord and Savior. You are, a, you are counted as righteous, and only the righteous will get into heaven. Okay? So you have to, you have to be righteous. And the only way to do that is to take on the one person, Jesus, who lived a righteous life, upheld every law, did not sin, and then imparted it to us as a free gift. And so that is the key. That's the key to Christian living, is now we are free to walk in the Spirit, even in H-E-B, 
even in Walmart. We are free to walk in the Spirit. Now, sometimes flesh takes over. And when that happens, we go to the Lord. We ask, we say we're sorry. He's, he's faithful to forgive. Now, Wesley believed, and again, this is, this is the one area that I really disagree with John Wesley. Wesley believed that you could achieve full sanctification on this side of heaven. Okay? Meaning that you could become sinless on this side of heaven. I don't believe that because I know that I'm always going to have, you're always going to have the flesh. But we should strive for that. I appreciate Wesley because we should strive to be perfect like our Father in Heaven is perfect. Not so that we can go around all pious and, oh, look at me, I'm so great. Oh, yeah, I really love the Lord. You know, no. It's, it, it's to reflect Jesus. That's one of our biggest jobs as Christians. And I want to I wanna realize that, that, that Paul in this passage is saying essentially there's the war of the old sinful self versus the new creation in Christ. The war of the old sinful self versus the new creation of Christ. And I battle that every day. And some days I'm really successful. I win the battle and I walk in the Spirit. And other days I'm in Walmart and I don't. No, it's not just in Walmart, obviously. But I want to close with this. In chapter 8, Paul writes, For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending His own Son, listen to this, in the likeness of of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. One more time. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled. You see, what we couldn't do, Christ did. And now we can walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And for that, we say thanks be to God in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you so much for freeing us from the enslavement of sin. We thank you so much for sending Jesus to fulfill what we couldn't fulfill, the righteous requirement of the law. Lord, help us to walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. We thank you in advance, Lord, though, for 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 knowing when we are, we are sorry that we do sometimes trip over our own unredeemed part of ourselves, the flesh. We thank you for being faithful to forgive when we ask and we repent. We pray all this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen.
big mountains that just up and move. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Yeah, that's my song. Walking with my Father to the great unknown. Need a good shepherd. you guys just to sit for just a second here. Um, I have a couple things I want to bring to your attention. First of all, on Wednesday, we are having our um, in-reach meeting, which is, um, I think we're going to be calling it the 11-minute team. You know, a guest comes here, they decide in the first 11 minutes whether they're coming back. So um, there's some, some things that I, I, I want to hear new ideas. We have some ideas, some of, some of the people that I've already talked to. Uh, that meeting, um, is Denise here? What, did we say 6 or 5.30 on Wednesday? Thursday at 6. No, I have another meeting Wednesday. Okay, so 6, six on, on Thursday, okay? Six on Thursday, everybody's invited. I've, at, I, I've sent an email out to some people that were I interested, but everybody's invited to that. And then, um, I'm just the messenger of this, okay? This is, but this is Wacky Wednesday Guidelines, okay? And um, here we go. So this is going to be some minor changes that we think will help make Wacky Wednesday um, a better experience for kids and adults, okay? Um, and this starts not this week, but next week. So um, we're going to have iPads. So please check your child in at the iP in the iPads at the CLC entrance and remain with them through supper. Supper will be from five, five, 528. We're going to start at 520. It says 530, but we know five, it's 528. I'm going to pray at 527. It'll be 528 through 550. So you have 22 minutes for, for supper, okay? When finished, pick, um, and see, I didn't write this, but, you know, okay. Uh, when finished eating, pick up plate and put in garbage can. Leftover ice and drink can be disposed of in the bucket. Well, we, we already kind of do that. Now, here's, a, here's some changes. The play area, I know kids, kids aren't going to like this. The play area, which is that side on the other side of the net. Remember, I'm only the messenger here, okay? I didn't come up with it. The play area will only be open from 5.50 to 6. Cleanup time will be 5.50 to 6. Now, 
Uh, here's, uh, here's something that is also new, and this is a safety measure, okay? This is safety. Children may not le be left in the gym during class time unsupervised and should be in their classrooms by six. So if children aren't in classrooms and they wanna sit in the, the, the CLC, that's fine, but they have to be accompanied by a parent. Um, and then it says, thank you for sharing your children with us on Wednesday nights, we look forward to another great year. Okay, so we have some of those guidelines. I, I can tell you that um, those guys, we didn't think of any individual people to signal out to make any of these changes. In fact, um, I don't have anything to do with any of these. Um, no, that's not true. I looked them over. I looked them over. I looked them over. And I approved, I approved of them. And I think, I think it's good. I mean, I think this is good. I think Wacky Wednesday. Um, the main thing is, folks, we can't have young, especially young kids dropped off here and their parents leave. That's dangerous, especially if we don't know them. So that's why, you know, these rules are, are in place. So, um, okay, well, let's stand and pray. See, Treva was supposed to read that, but she didn't want to, so I said, I'll do it. I took the bullet. All right, let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that we no longer have to walk exclusively in the flesh but we can walk in the holy spirit help us to be in tune with the holy spirit so we please you with more and more of our lives we we praise you in jesus holy name amen